Welcome to the Nikola 11 X12 technology. Today we are looking at the Asus ENG TX 560 DC 2DI 1GD5 graphics card from Nvidia. This is the Asus GeForce GTX 560 Direct CU 1GB GDDR5 non TI card. So just GTX 560, not TI. There's a difference between these two. Here's the aggressive box which looks fantastic by the way. Right off the bat you can see we're talking about the Asus GTX 560 Direct CU card with 1GB of GDDR5 memory. Nvidia's physx feature is supported of course. Super alo power and voltage tweak features are also featured. On the back of the box it claims that the Direct CU design should keep the car 20% cooler than Nvidia's reference design does. Then what super alo power actually means is that you get 15% more performance, a lot lower temperatures, 35 degrees celsius here and a 2.5 times longer lifespan which is great. Then you can easily do some voltage tweaks with this card and right here are the outputs. In the box you get the Molex to 6 pin PCI Express cable, then you get the mini HDMI to HDMI adapter, a DVI to VGA adapter and the graphics card itself in an anti-static bag of course. Underneath you get the Asus Speed setup booklet with the drivers. And here's the card itself in its glory. Here's the standard fan that Asus includes and the beautiful red stripes at the end here. Then the silver Asus logo. On the side you can see two thick heat pipes that should help dissipate the heat. I really like that black metal plate that I added here on the side of the PCB. On the back we now see it's perfectly matte black PCB. Four metal screws for maximum pressure. On top you see the SLI finger. This card supports two-way SLI. For the outputs you get two DVI ports and one single mini HDMI port. It's a dual slot card obviously. Right here we can see a part of the heatsink. The other end of the card has lots of room for ventilation. Also to power up this card you will need two PCI Express 6 pin connectors. Now let's move on to the specifications. The Asus ENG TX 560 DC 2DI 1GD5 graphics card has 1GB of GDDR5 memory and uses the GF114 GPU. It has a core clock of 810 MHz and 1002 MHz on the memory clock. Has a TDP of 150 watts on load and uses the 40 nanometer architecture. Full DirectX 11 support of course and it has a bus width of 256 bit. Here in GPU-Z you can see the GTX 560 specs again. Good amount of transistors and the card also has 336 unified shaders which are the CUDA cores by the way. Full DirectX 11 and shader model 5.0 support as mentioned before already. 1GB of GDDR5 memory so fast video RAM here. 256 bit on the bus width and the bandwidth is very high, 128.3 gigabytes per second. Of course at the time of this video I'm also using the latest drivers and I'm running the card at stock speeds. But it will overclock easily if you feel you need to squeeze a little more out of this card. But now let's move on to the test system I'm going to use today for the benchmarks. In 3D Mark Vantage at a performance preset this card scores over 15,000, 15,627, that's a great score, very high score indeed, but will the results look good in 3D Mark 11 as well? This was tested under the performance preset and got an amazing score of P4114, that's amazing, considering this is heavy DirectX 11 rendering. Now here in 3D Mark 6 there's some DirectX 9 rendering going on. Yes it's old now, but still you can see the performance of this card, it's powerful. I wouldn't call that a low end or mainstream card at all. In Cinebench release 11.5 the GTX 560 got an average frame rate of 57.79 FPS, so around 60 FPS, that's great for OpenGL rendering in my opinion. In Unigen Heaven benchmark 2.5 at 1680 by 1050 on Extreme DirectX 11 settings, this card has an average FPS of 19.1, 6.4 on minimum and 46.4 FPS at max. Scores are 482, which is good for a card at this performance level. Keep in mind that I ran the test at maxed out settings. Let's move on to Unigen Sanctuary Benchmark 2.3 at 1680 by 1050 on highest DirectX 11 settings of course. Results look massive here, but that's because it's very light DX11 rendering compared to the Heaven Benchmark. 
but the average frame rate is 90.2 FPS, minimum 56.4 and at max 120.9 FPS. Scores are 3023, so that was an easy challenge for this card. And last Planet 2 benchmark at 680 by 1050 and maxed out settings as always, I got 50.8 FPS and rank B in test A. In test B I got 41 FPS and rank B as well. Actually I was surprised to see such high frame rates on maxed out settings. A reason for that is that Last Planet 2 is an Nvidia game. So let's move on to Fermac at 1280 by 720 without anti-aliasing at benchmark no preset. And obviously you can see this card scored 2480 and has an average frame rate of 42 FPS. Nothing to complain. In games like Dirt 3 at 1680 by 1050 on ultra high settings I get 65 FPS on average and 54 FPS on minimum. So no problem at all in this game, but still Battlefield 3 pushes this card down, but the GTX 560 shows its strength with good frame rates. At first I ran a test at 1680 by 1050 on ultra high settings with maxed out AE and AF. The average frame rate is 44 FPS, minimum 32 and at max 62 FPS. I wouldn't call that absolutely playable, but once I turned the AA and AF down to the minimum, I got totally playable results on ultra high settings. Very nice 57 FPS on average, minimum 42 and at max 63 FPS. So it's definitely one of the best gaming graphics card for the price. Now what the Nvidia physics feature actually does is it makes the graphics card help the CPU to do the physics in games or applications. This will of course only work if the game or application supports the Nvidia physics feature. But keep in mind that the power consumption of the card will increase a little bit as well. But you get an enormous boost in performance like you can see here in 3D Mark Vantage. I used the Intel Core i7-2700K CPU that scored 60,760. That's massive. When physics is disabled, the CPU has to do the physics alone, it only scores 26,485. This is the raw CPU power. But enough for the benchmarks now, let's move on to the temperatures. On idle I get 22 degrees Celsius which are 72 degrees Fahrenheit. On load the temperatures go all the way up to 63 degrees Celsius which are 145 degrees Fahrenheit. My ambient room temperature was a 17 degrees Celsius which are 63 degrees Fahrenheit when I ran the tests. So great temperatures, even on load the card runs very cool. The Asus E and GTX 560 DC-2DI-1 GD5 graphics card is definitely a beast of a card when comparing price, performance and the power consumption. For a price this is one of the best graphics cards you could get. It's similar to AMD's HD 6870 card. Then what I love about this card is the way it's designed. Everything, the color scheme, the shape, the heat pipes, everything. I'm impressed by this card. Pros are great price performance ratio, massive performance in games and applications, then there are the low temperatures and the very beautiful direct CU design that I love so much. For the cons I have nothing to say at all. I give this card a 10 out of 10 and definitely recommend it. Thanks for watching.